I was hoping to get on here um, while that wretched song was on. Some say love, it is a river. I don't know what, I don't remember what that um, artist is, but you can hear the uh, vibes going on at this airport. It's bringing the Cure tour and blues on because um, the music is so dated. Can you hear the music? This is like, um, who's the um, saxophone guy? Manny or something, I don't know. Um, but I thought, I thought maybe this would be a good time to do a post-cure check-in proper. I really hope that you guys can hear this. I really hope that this is even online, I don't even know. It says that it's connected, but... So today is June, no. July 2nd, 2023. The Cure Tour in America has come to an end. And although they will be here in uh, for Riot Fest, it, that's kind of weird. I feel like it doesn't count. Like what really counts is that the whole tour is over. What also counts is I, I, I seem to have lost all skills of um, using a, a video, a camera phone. But man, this music is bringing me down. It's bringing me down. Earlier today, I did a, a little broadcast on YouTube, and I've been at the airport ever since. That was at 11.30 in the morning, and now it's almost 5 o'clock. I'm still here, which is totally fine, because I had some time to do nothing, and I actually took a nap in this, this particular airport, the Fort Myers, Florida airport, is very mellow. Yanni, that's what this music is, right? Is it Yanni? It's just... This is the final of the boarding call for flight. 2420 stop service to Houston. All ticketed and confirmed passengers should be on board through the doorway marked C7. To Houston. This is the final and immediate boarding call for flight 2420 to Houston. So, part of the cure, wh why do we get the cure blues? It's not, you know, at the root of it, yeah, you, who, who doesn't want to go to a concert every single night, you know, of your favorite band? But a lot of it is just getting back to normal life. Which, beyond the fact of bills, work, everything you've put off for the, the Cure Tour, it's living in the land of Yanni. You know what I mean? Oh, there's Coke over there at the bar. I'm being such a bitch right now because I'm tired. Look at this, though. Watch this. Ready? Do you guys remember what this is? Well, it's not a pay phone, but it's an actual phone. Oh, it's a courtesy phone, so I'm not going to be a jerk and, and use it, but... Final morning call for United Airlines 2420 to Houston, door C7. Pretty Welcome cool, right? Customers must proceed at the stop reporting, door C7. Door will be closing in three minutes. Also, my flight is uh, late, and look, it's going to rain. It's already raining. Oh my god! Press for rain! So, okay. So back to discussing 
post-tour blues. Like at this point, some people have a short travel on their way home. Some people have a long travel and that's when the danger starts. Because if you're just like, boop, I gotta go home and you're home in two hours and you're back in the thick of it, you don't even have time to think about whatever. But when it's a long flight or delayed or this or that, man, you're just, you're in the throes. I'm completely distracted by the music that's in this airport, but, um, and it was seriously making me like, my life is not trapped in, in Yanni, um, Muzak in New York. It's, it's a whole other bag of worms. And by the way, yesterday, last night, I was like, I'm done seeing the cure. I'm over. I'm done. Not because of anything particular that happened or didn't happen, but because I think I go, I personally go through that now. Like maybe it's time to hang up my hat and pass the baton. I know United I'm not. Airlines, Houston Pressure, Di Rosato, <laughs> Cecilia and Michael Di Rosato, proceed immediately to door C7, your aircraft is about to depart. I know I'm not going to stay that way forever, and who knows when they're going to... I mean, we know that they're going to go to South America, which is so cool, and I'm looking so forward to hearing about the fans that get to go. Um, but I guess also for me uh, on this tour, the, the struggle with the tickets and a lot of bullying online, which I've, I've spoken about... I, I don't... I don't... I don't want to... I don't want to... Um, so, so Pete Schoen says, great show last night. The Miami show was really wonderful, partially because of the band and partially because of the crowd. The crowd was spectacular. They were really, really, really into the music. Of course, in the set list, we got Love Cats, which hasn't been played in forever which if any of you are um, Holy Hour listeners, um, Cecilia, sorry to interrupt, received the donation. Um, I may have, if you did it through my website, um, thank you, I will find out once I get home. But anyway, so uh, Gavin's son, Hendrix, is that his name? I shouldn't be doing this podcast right now or with this broadcast. Anyway, it was his first Cure show last night and he's like eight, nine, ten, or something and they played Love Cats and it's amazing because that's his favorite song and they never play Love Cats anymore. Um, and Siciliana is talking about uh, donations. So... There's a couple ways if, you know, if anyone wants to support what I do, um, the way that Ceciliana did it is through my website, and that is a portal through which specifically goes to the, the bucket that is for the movie. And I know a lot of people are like, this movie's never going to be made. But it will be. It will be. In one way or another. I just don't want to just put some crappy shit on YouTube. and Because when, when you, like this stuff that I do, it, it no longer belongs to me. Once it's on YouTube, it, it's, it, they can do uh, almost anything to it. Um, and there's another way that if you want to support what I do, I have a Patreon page, but I don't want to go on about it. I hate asking for money. Um, so that's that. And Robert says, Robert, Robert, Couture says Robert's voice was in 90s form last night. I think that's interesting. What makes you say that, Robert? Um, no, I'm not disagreeing. But I'm curious to know what makes you say that. I definitely felt like his voice was in great shape. There was a couple times on the tour where it seemed like he was getting sick, you know? I mean, these tours, 
must be so grueling for the band at this point. And we can thank Robert for that, because he does the schedule. And he keeps adding dates, right? And they're all in their 60s, and they have families, and they have lives. And despite the fact that Jason Cooper and Simon Gallup are basically triathletes, and they're so fucking strong, it's ridiculous, there's still people with bodies that are in their 60s. Um, so it's pretty amazing that they're doing this. And so, yeah, they get tired. Oh, so Robert Couture says, I felt like he was going through the motions a lot on the other nights. Maybe. Um, I don't know that he was going through the motions. He may have just trying to have been conserving energy, you know, and maybe he was able to give it his all on a night where, like Miami where he has a day to rest the night before. Like, like two Atlanta shows and then one Tampa show. Like Tampa was, they were, seemed tired, but, but still, if you compare their, um, their performance oh, level to a lot of bands that have been around for a long time, they are just so far and beyond so many bands. It's incredible. Um, but Robert Couture, I can see what you're saying, definitely. Um, the tour is amazing. Thank you for keeping every date with everything. Lived it all through you. Oh. Thanks, Beth. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun to do updates. So another update I, I, I will say is that um, I thought it was neat that through the tour, you know, in Europe it was very easy to have fan meetups for whatever reason, cure drinks. It's been a long-standing tradition in Europe and the UK. My first cure drink was in 1999, and I think their first cure drink within this generation, you know, I'm sure they did it in the 80s in whatever way they, they, could, they did those things, but it was in 1999, and I didn't really see it much in the States in 2016 and in other tours. Um, so that was cool that, like, the idea of a meetup, pre-meetup, and post was happening. Because I personally, I do like a pre-meetup. Uh, post is always hard because I'm exhausted after the gig. Um, hey, David Broom. See you in Bushwick, <laughs> Brooklyn sometime. Um, But yeah, I, I liked that there was a lot of fan meetups and the last one in Miami was off the hook. It was, there were so many people there, which was great because Miami, sorry anybody from my, Miami, but downtown where we were, it was so trashy and expensive. And by trashy, I mean like garbage, like construction and it's kind of a, kind of a drag and so expensive so expensive so that was the other thing of post covid i thought about this a lot too that we experienced this tour hi ariel we experienced this tour in a in the after times one year ago today some people were still not sure if they could do the cure tour right what would it be like I mean, would we all have to wear masks? Who's wearing masks? Who's going? A lot of people probably didn't want to go. Would we have to fly with regulations? That was just a year ago. So when the 2022 tour came, that was great, but that was stressful on its own, for its own reasons. I got COVID during tour, that was fun. Um, but the other component is this, um, everything is so utterly expensive right now like everywhere everywhere it's so expensive Ticketmaster is a horror show um, there's a lot of tension in the air um, and again that what I've mentioned is the, the online toxicity levels are off the hook. They are redonkulous. I long, I long for these times. Uh, 
I long, I long, I long for these times here. Um, so what el what else is there to say about the Cure? Um, does anybody really care if there's an album or not? <laughs> it's not that I don't care, but I kind of feel like we we saw five new songs and seeing alone an end song. I don't know. It just it's so beautiful and so perfect. Um, the cure, the guy who runs the cure on this day said he came over, like really, to see Ensong and Alone live. And I, I, I feel that way too. I feel like Ensong is my favorite, followed by Alone, of the new songs. And then what's interesting is I didn't like a fragile thing in the beginning. I thought it was too like goofy for me, but now I like it. And David says, I had doubts after booking Krakow, wondering whether the Ukraine situation would affect. Uh, yeah, that's another great point. And by the way, what is going on in Russia right now? I mean, we, I, we, <laughs> I haven't been able to c catch up to news or anything, um, but, uh, you know, so like the Twilight Sad always says, it's like, I'm, I'm very grateful to even be able to do this. Like, so grateful to have the opportunity to do this. Um, thank you, Kathy. Yeah. I also thought this tour, I'll probably ref reflect on this again, but I've said it in other ver um, podcasts or whatever that this was really weird as far as um, the cure being a bucket list item like I gotta go to the Grand Canyon before I die and I gotta go see the cure before I die um, which is great for those people and it's great for the band like that's not a bad thing that I'm talking about but it is a thing that is it just changed the dynamic in a way that for me, you know, it did make me nostalgic for the days where every single person in the venue was dying to be there, was so excited. Not every person, but like the odds are or that the people around you are super hungry to be there, not super hungry to eat a thing of popcorn and a slice of pizza and, you know, be on their phones and whatever. Um, well, I mean, it's, Nicholas, it's one, so somebody's saying, lol, it was a bucket list for me, had to wait 15 years, but I'm saying more like, like, oh, I want to go to Disneyland and I want to see The Cure. And again, like, I'm, I'm not knocking that, like, it's great for the band. Um, it just changed the atmosphere in a lot of ways. I just haven't been around so many distracted people at a show since maybe 1992 when Wish was huge. It's just weird. It's just weird. Uh, the Cure are super popular right now and I hope it sticks. I hope it's not a phase and it's sort of like took y'all long enough to figure out that they're really, really good. Um, yeah, and I mean, it's like, you don't need to be like a, I'm not saying, again, like I'm not saying that you need to be some big, huge fan, but I just don't want to be at any show, even if it's a tiny band, you know, where people are yapping too much next to me and I can't focus on what's in front of me. So it was just interesting and like I hope I, I, I don't like anything that's like a fad or a phase and that's one thing I always liked about The Cure and a lot of the, the bands that, you know, some of us liked, especially, I mean they're more popular now, but they were so weird and obscure, it's like they, they couldn't be a fad or if they were, at least the people that were 
posers were interesting. I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I'm making any sense. Um, yeah, need a Cure fan club for sure. I would love it if the Cure would have a, a fan club with Janie and Chris running it, like they used to run Cure News, and then um, Carl and Ange and a whole bunch of others could be the moderators for it. You know, it could be online like it was um, in the mid-aughts and whatnot. You know, I don't know. I feel like there's so many resources out there that could be utilized well. <sighs> this mu Can you guys still hear this music? What else is there to talk about? Probably nothing. It's been 20 minutes, that's long enough. Um, I'm looking forward to coming home. I'm gonna be sad that I'm not gonna be in Cure Town, which means running into Cure fans everywhere. And just you know, like following, you know, that's the thing about social media, like it is fun to watch Jeremy, the roadie, do like, are you ready for a gig? And Ed stuff and Feral Punk and you know, Susan Gabrels is so fun to, you know, she, she runs Reeves's stuff and, am I doing Riot Fest? No. No jazz feet? <laughs> Let's talk about Burn and when Robert and Simon lean on each other. Um, I love Burn. I love Burn, but I love Burn because of Jason. Because that song has evolved. This, this background is boring. I love that song and its evolution. If you listen to Burn, the recording, and you listen to the way that J Jason plays the drums now, it's pretty awesome. Wait a minute, I'm trying to get my camera right. Um, when Robert and Simon lean on each other, so my, my personal thing about that is I feel like it happened once and it was super adorable and they, they kept doing it, which is cool and fine, but um, yeah, it's just like a thing now. It's like um, the Burn Studio sound, recording sound naked after hearing it live all summer. I hadn't heard the studio version in a while. Yeah, really. I mean, it, it, it does. Um, why did I say it could be my last show? I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but yeah, the, the, the Robert and, and Simon leaning on, anything, leaning on each other thing is cute. Um, I wonder how much is just like, okay, now we do this and now we do that. And again, it's not, I'm not being critical. Uh, but you know what's really cute actually is when like during Close to Me or the songs where Robert runs around, if you watch the other band player, band members, that's, can be, that can be really cute. Like Reeves is always being super funny and positive um, with Simon and uh, I don't know, they just get playful, you know? There was one moment um, where There was one moment where, um, oh God, where was it? Where it was during Plain Song, Robert gave Perry a huge hug. And that really affected me. Because I know it's, it's, you know, probably been weird for people to have this s six member back all of a sudden and there's been no public comment about it. and whatnot, but yeah, I think that's all I'm going to say about that, is that I love that moment. Um, why do I say it's going to be my last Cure show? Because I say that a lot at, at this point in the tour, like in after the European tour, I was like, you know what? Like, what if I, what if I could, what if I could not do America? You know, because like even doing the movie, right? Every time I go to Cure shows, I take away from time 
to get this project done. Or I take away from time of making income. And I love following the cure. I love it, I love it, I love it. But I'm just like everybody, most people watching this, like, it's, it's a money pit. And I wish I didn't need to worry about that. And, and even with what I do now, like, I want to do it more. I want to talk more about The Cure and other, other music. And I want to travel and bring people around the world with me because I found that it's something I like to do. But I, I need to make a living. I need to pay the rent. So... You know, and then I guess for me, like, a lot of, like, the level of, of, of bullying I got this time was so, it, it, it messed with my head so much, and it took me out of some of the shows, because I always, when, when, I don't know about you guys, but when I get bullied, I want to know why. And if somebody bullies you, you can't know why, because they're just mean. Well, I don't know, I don't understand why anyone would go out of their way to be nasty to somebody publicly. I, I don't, I don't get that. So, do I have a rough cut of the film? Uh, no, I don't have a rough cut of the film because I don't have the money to make a rough cut and I don't have the people to make a rough cut. Um, I've given up on this, pro I've given up on the film a lot, you know, and now I have two producers behind me who are working on a budget and um, we have a pitch deck and, and it's going to happen. It's just taking an excruciatingly long time because we don't have, we don't have money, you know, to pay an editor $300 a day or $600 a day and pay a colorist and pay, you know, all the things like look at even a low budget movie is going to cost thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and when you add the Cure's music, Ooh. lawyers, Ooh. Um, I'm, I'm not a great editor, um, I'm a director, so I mean, you guys have probably seen things I've edited which are fine, but they're not that good, they're okay, and maybe that's what it's going to be at the end of the day, but I don't want it to be on YouTube. Anyway. Who are the, the I'm not going to name the I'm not going to name the people that bully bully me, but it's just um, I think that part of the problem is that in this post-COVID time, people hid, uh, and it's easier to hide behind the screen and do shit. I don't know. It's fucking crazy. I mean, I, I, I'll give one second of, uh, of airtime to this, but like, look at what, what happened to Robert recently online. It's just, it's, it's too much. It's too much. So, um, thank you, Robert. Um, yeah, I wish I was a better editor, Siciliana, but I, I don't think, yeah, I don't think I'm a great editor. Um, still waiting on your flight, Arisha. Yes, I am. So, is anybody here going to um, South America? Anyone? Anyone? I'm not going, but I will be getting correspondence and I will also do that for Riot Fest and anything that um, anything that else comes up. So I have this Patreon page. FYI, I have a Patreon page, and that is just like to like help me, you know, do this for a tiny bit of money. Um, if anyone's interested, but I actually still haven't figured out Patreon that much because I need to sort of. If you do Patreon, you have to give people sort of a special thing on Patreon. Blah blah blah. I know this is getting boring. Now it's been 30 minutes. I should go. I gotta go. This is boring. You and Carl with the Cure Watch Party saved my life during quarantine. Yeah, that was so fun. That was so fun. And you know what? I'm going home to an empty 
apartment because Carl moved to the UK to get married to Jane. Jane's a lovely gal. And Jane, I can't wait to come to your house <laughs> and see what room is for guest Arusha. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sad that, that Carl's gonna be gone. He moved uh, to my apartment right when COVID started. That's the other thing, and I'm glad you brought that up because like Carl and I met through Following the Cure and it's so easy to just be kind and have fun. It's just, it's, it's very easy, you know? Um, sorry, I'm reading this thing. All right, I have to go, go do some laps, um, but stay, stay fun, stay safe out there. Can't wait to go to sleep. Oh, what's everybody gonna watch? I'm gonna like relax and watch some movies. I wish I could watch Yellow Jackets again and um, Handmaid's Tale and Chernobyl and what else? Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, lots of things. Um, your viewer count is growing, not dropping off. Yeah, yeah, I'll keep going, I'll keep going. Um, but right now I'm gonna go walk around, have fun, safe travels. See you on the flip side. Be nice to each other. Go water a tree. Go look at a butterfly. Talk to you soon. Did I just say go water a butterfly? <laughs> go hug a water bug and kiss an alligator. All right.